Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of NetApp Converge. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and analyst, Rob Strache. Rob, we're here at the MGM, the room is starting to fill up, we're feeling, feeling the buzz. Yeah, I, I think again, it's really about this kickoff for the year and getting the year and their FY25 started. And really, all of these announcements that were made today are just really best in class and how that's going to help really propel through the year the momentum that NetApp saw in 2024 as well. Exactly, so. well a great, we have a great new guest to talk more about this. We have Gaby Boko, she is the Chief Marketing Officer here at NetApp. Thank you so much for coming I on. I am so happy to be here. Fresh from the main stage. Fresh from the main stage. <laughs> So we have, we have a lot to get into today, but let's start by talking about AI, because companies are feeling the pressure to accelerate innovation and um, adopt data-driven decision-making. How do NetApp solutions help businesses embrace and, and also get what they want, extract the value from AI. Yeah, you know, NetApp's been in AI for a while now, actually. Uh, we have embedded AI in a lot of our tools, um, at Blue XP, which is a good control plane where you're monitoring your ransomware, some of our cloud ops solutions where you're able to kind of optimize your flow in between the cloud. Um, there's, it's, it's literally everywhere. Um, I think what we're excited about is the opportunity that Gen AI brings to that. Not for our products, so to speak, but for our customers' workloads as they think about how to manage their data management, how to think about data more completely and to allow Gen AI workloads and use cases to really start to kind of bring those to life in a much more cost-effective and secure way. So we're excited, all aspects of AI, specifically Gen AI right now. So I, I, I think, as people who follow NetApp, I think part of it is that you guys did a brand refresh last year. Yep. Now you have even more coming out today. Take us through kind of how, how you're thinking about this and that, how that really, the brand, because it's all on tap under, under the hood, but really these different form factors and different approaches. Yeah, you know, I really think that when we sat and looked at what we wanted our brand to be, we wanted to really go back to legacy and not be so far forward that we felt it maybe out of touch or out of reach. But we didn't want to go so far back that people stopped thinking of us in all these other areas that we've been experimenting in and innovating in. Um, so what was really important to us is to redefine some of the language we used. You saw that today with our announcement um, around the new AFF series, right? We're redefining Unified to be more than just a protocol, but to be how you are integrated. Unified can be so much more than that, any, da any data, any workload, any place. We have the same principles on how we were dealing with AI, which we wanted to talk about. We we didn't want to AI wash, if I can use that. <laughs> we wanted to kind of give ourselves permission to explore intelligence because we felt that that was part of our legacy of innovation. So intelligence was big there. So you kind of get that, we're redefining infrastructure to be on-prem and in the cloud, new unified storage, we're redefining intelligence, but at the core of that is data. We really came out of this saying, it's about our customer's data. That's what we're here for. We're here to protect it. We're here to optimize it. We're here to go where their data goes. So when you thought about those three things together, that gave us intelligent data infrastructure. And I think it gives us forward momentum, innovation, as well as that legacy we talked about. So, I mean, we're going to continue to talk about the future and looking forward, because it's not just a brand refresh, it's actually what's going on at the company. It's sort of the outward marketing and positioning, but also what's really happening underneath the hood. So what do you see as the role of intelligent data infrastructure? How do you see it evolving at NetApp? And then what are some of the major next steps? Yeah, I, so I'll break it down by saying data infrastructure is something that everybody is thinking about because the amount of data everybody has, right? It's increasing the complexity that comes with that, clearly the cost that comes with their increasing amounts of data. So as you, I, we thought about data infrastructure, we knew that it could evolve with us and with our customers' needs. I don't know what our customers' needs are tomorrow, but I know that they're going to continue to have data needs. So I really think that data infrastructure is, is the, the grounding, if you will, of what we want to be committed to for our customers. If you start to think about how it has grown for us, it almost is like a holy cow, we were always here, we were always doing that. When I went out to customers and partners and analysts and even people who didn't notice, they're like, yeah, you were always here. And yeah, I am thinking about this because our data is as close to being a product 
as a product is. So I'm excited about the future of data infrastructure, especially NetApp's intelligent data infrastructure, because it is the new product, I think, and I think customers will continue to just say, we want to evolve with you, and we want to help you evolve it, the storyline. Yeah, I, I think what has been really interesting in, in getting prepared for this, we, we saw that you had your cloud complexity report, yeah. and there was the IDC AI maturity model. You know, we do our own research, but we think that, like, Again, looking at everybody's, because all these data points are really pointing in very interesting directions, mm -hmm. and I, I think for the customers. How did you see the data coming out of the cloud complexity report? You know, I think it was really interesting because we started off with a cloud complexity report, and then because of the rise of AI, and because we relaunched our, our brand, it was like all of this other new data was just kind of, yes, that's, that's saying the exact same thing we're thinking. I think the AI components were super interesting, because people were linking their progression, um, whether they were a data laggard with being an AI laggard. And I think that that is what is really telling in that cloud complexity report, right? As you think about where your data is going, you have to think about what tools are you going to use for that? Or are you going to use continue to use the cloud? Do you need to optimize that with AI? And so what I love about us doing surveys and data profiles like that is if we really are committed to data, then showcasing and telling that story with data is the best thing because our customers, clearly some analysts too, coming back to us and saying, this is cool, we love this. Give us more data and we'll be better partners with you. So I like, kind of like that, that yeah. rub. Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I went through it, it was like 37 pages long or something, which I thought was fantastic yeah. because there's so much good data in there, like you said, around AI, not just cloud complexity. And we, we kind of look at it from a research perspective is cloud, is an operating model, yep. not a place. And I think ONTAP definitely, that's ONTAP. I mean, Thousand it's, percent. it's all over the place. Edge, it's core, it's on-prem, it's in the cloud at the hyperscalers and even with the partners like you have here that do Colo. I, one of the things I thought was really interesting in there was also was like some of the things where like sustainability took a step down, but people were also saying, here's where I'm stealing budget from from an AI perspective. It wasn't about the data, the data still was where they were investing. How did you see, and how do you see the partners really leaning into this that are here today and really taking that and saying, hey, this is how we're going to move forward? Yeah, I think that the most important part of any good company is their ecosystem, and, and clearly our ecosystem, we've tried to broaden it. It's, it's we've got strong partners, partners who are able to build the kinds of workloads and use cases that customers are going to need. We have a strong alliance network of, of integrations that are deep into our ONTAP into our on tap base. And then we have those hyperscalers you talked about where again, it's like it's built in. I like that term built in because when you think about the entirety of that ecosystem, what you're really seeing is we're not just going and doing point solution or separate solution bolt-on. We are literally building that functionality into every single one of their environments, every single one of our environments, so that they can be successful. And that's really where our partners are starting to, to lean and say, I want to build this workload, this use case. I was just over here the other day with WWT who showcased we did this with ONTAP, this with your AFF, and this with, I can't remember what else, it was really loud, but they, they said, this is a workload that we're running on NetApp and we couldn't do that without you. So I think about intelligent data infrastructure as that ecosystem, it's bolstered by that ecosystem and it is built in so that everybody in that ecosystem can really bring the advantages to the data for the customers, otherwise, we're just a pile of bolt-ons, and that's, nobody wants that, right? So I love that our ecosystem is happy. Yeah, and, and I think even in those announcements that you had today, it had wide-ranging for data protection and cyber resilience, and I, like you said, built in, right? Built, not mm -hmm. built on, not sidecar, not things like that. Do you see that as really one of the strengths and, you know, really things that you're leaning, I mean, George was talking about it even just a minute ago. It's, it seems to be one of the strengths that everybody's trying to copy in the market around NetApp is, hey, it's built in versus built on. And, you know, again, some are more successful than others about doing that, but nobody's been as successful as NetApp in that. I, I think it's a key to our success, absolutely. I think uh, a lot of people engineer a platform by saying, I'm going to build a platform. 
And then it's about building the platform and then maybe fixing or applying disparate acquisitions or products and trying to make that fit your perfect base. Uh, what I love about NetApp is that we built all of these things even though they were built separately, we knew that they needed to be integrated and built in. All of the functionality needed to be there. So it's almost like we've been building this very intricate, accessible data platform for over a decade, and now it's just kind of like, when our competitors see this, like, oh, maybe we should have done it that way, which I love, right? Because that's really what we are. We are this, this profound data infrastructure, this platform, if you want to use that word, that's focused on how to bring the right things to our customers and doing the right thing with our data. And you don't do that by thinking in a silo of this product, this product, this product, and then, oh gosh, I got to go integrate those, right? So I want to get into that a little bit more because, I mean, a technology company is only as good as its ecosystem. And so how are you working with customers to determine what their problems will be tomorrow and make sure that you have the solutions that, that, can, that can help them overcome those challenges and hurdles that they're facing? Yeah, we've got a couple of different things. Obviously, we do what everybody does. I'm not going to, you know, pride of ownership, we do EBCs, we do customer advice, boards, we do partner advisory boards. But I think what we really like about our approach is that it's constant, right? When we're in the trial stage or we're in the alpha or beta stage, it's not the first time the customers are seeing it. Quite frankly, it's because a customer asked for it. It's because a partner said, I'm at a customer, I need an X. So we really, you know, instead of just saying it as a platitude, we really embrace it and say, we're thinking about this. Ecosystem, what do you think? And then we go off and we make sure it fits into the roadmap. And I think that makes it great. I think the other thing that we think about, quite frankly, is what are your use cases? Are your use cases or workloads working for you? How do we bring those in? You've already spent the time on them. How do we make them more apparent and more obvious and accessible to everybody else? So we really try to build that level of community as well. So, you know, it's, it's got to be more than a platitude. It's, you, you really have to live it. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll ask you a question, because I, I think that we were talking with George about this, and he actually had a, a great line about not AI washing. Now you're in marketing, and how hard was it to not try to AI wash everything? <laughs> that was here? actually I mean, her line. I'm, good, I'm just well, going it was, to it is track it's the true. record. Yeah, okay. It was Davy's line. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> Thank you. But I mean, how hard is it to not? Because there's so much noise out in the market, and everybody's like, I mean, even some of the stuff George was talking about with metadata and things like that, there's a lot of things you can lean into right. and a lot of technology there. You know, I, it was very tempting. And, and when you're rebuilding messaging and narrative, which is why we didn't make it a campaign, right? We wanted to really get back to our core, to our gut store story. And by the way, my boss is a great advocate. When he picks up on something, he goes with it. So if he wants AI wash, then I'll give it to him. <laughs> but everybody had an opinion. Yeah. Everybody, I think we started with like a thousand words and, and putting them together and, and there were some that rose to the top that everybody was very passionate about. But one of the things we very clearly said, we don't want to repeat the, the mistakes that we've made from the past. Our, our other messaging has been great, it's been solid, it's definitely put us in a position to be successful. But I think sometimes it got maybe a little bit forward of where the market and where the customer was. Um, when we talked about data fabric, data fabric is really smart and it's still embedded in what we do but we got a little too far forward on our skis. Same with cloud. We embraced cloud. We embraced it before all of our competitors did, but we got a little too far forward and our customers were like, we're not there yet. So I think we were really focused on saying, this story has to be true to us and we need words that signify we know that this is going in the market, but we don't want to be like everybody else who has now put AI or .AI or something in their, in their narrative. We already know we've been here for a decade. We already know where we're going. Let's just be confident in the story that we're going to tell. And if we are embedding AI in, um, in kind of how we talk about it and building products, they'll pick up on it and they'll appreciate the fact that we didn't wash it. Gaby, how do you describe your overarching strategy as the CMO of NetApp in terms of how you, you're driven to solidify your position in this very competitive market? Yeah, oh wow, um, very, very competitive. I respect all of my fellow CMOs. They are, they are very, very um, hard acts to, to compete with. However, I do believe that what makes us strong is by being focused and prioritized. Um, that brand narrative has been the basis of how we think about 
doing demand. How obviously here today and for the next couple of days, how we're training our salespeople. The less messages that come at them, the less kind of things that you're, you're throwing at them, the more compelling you can actually be. So my strategy is really less, is quite honestly more. Um, and, and I want to get the less right. I want it to be resonant and I want to make sure that everybody in the company who are my best brand ambassadors can feel that empowered and, and that, co that compelling when they go tell that story. It's true with accessorizing, it's true with data infrastructure. So less is more. Thank you so much, Gaby. A, a real pleasure having you on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Stretch. I stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of NetApp Converge. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in technology enterprise coverage.